You know, uh, I, I thought a sneaky game, and I hate to use the word sneaky game because they're two heavyweights, Villanova and Baylor. But the game yeah. was played on Sunday, and, you know, it kind of runs into the NFL. And, you know, Saturday ended with a lot of great basketball games, non-conference. And then you had this one on Sunday that almost came and went by quickly. But I happened to watch it, follow it very closely. And I'll make this statement, Arch. It, it was the greatest defensive performance that I have seen playing against the quality of team that Villanova is. When you consider the great coach Jay Wright is, the team that they currently have, the experienced team that they have, how yep. well they've played this year, playing yep. a road game at Baylor. Um, and I think Villanova's staff would be the first to say, I hear you, coach, is they struggled to get good shots. All right. So the back well, I mean, look at these, look at the put these in context, the Villanova's team, the fewest points and lowest field goal percentage under Jay Wright held under 40 for the first time since 1979 in the 36 points tied for the fewest points by an AP top 10 team in the shot clock era. That is a historic performance. So I'm going to give Baylor. you, I'm going to add to that historic performance. Baylor held Villanova from two shooting two point shots, 40 minute game, six for 27 from two Villanova that depends a lot on the three point shot six for 27 from three. But if you look at it, it was equal amount of twos and threes. They really did a great job defending. I mean, 12 field goals made in the game, but six for 27 from two, six for 27 from three. And Villanova only shot 10 free throws. And for a team that a lot of times finishes 40 minute games with single digit turnovers, Villanova, they had, I believe, 13 turnovers in the game as well. So that's backing up what we said, all right? And we have some we have some clips here from the game, and uh, I'd like to kind of go over them with you and just really show you. It, it was Baylor's length, scheme, intensity was just, uh, in my mind, indescribable. Again, especially against, you know, you're looking at the number six team in America, Villanova. Yep, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Baylor's defense, and I thought just – for me and my perspective, it takes incredible effort and talent to be able to do this. But Villanova is the best team in college basketball at driving the ball to bait you, suck your defense in and kick out for threes, make one more for threes. And it's just a constant barrage, a drive, land on two feet, kick one more. They, 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 they really have that down. To be able to stay at home on shooters on drives is, is really, really, it's hard to do. It's very hard to do. And number two, to be able to play one-on-one -on -one defense on drives into the paint and not foul and stay in the play without getting beat for, for angle layups or undisciplined play, um, two of the hardest things to do for a team defense. Can you guard the ball and stay in front and, and not foul and play tough? And can you stay at home on drives? To me, was a big concept in this game, which was, you know, able to do it. So we're going to go here, Sean. You run the, you run the the show. I, I'll kind of well, run the run the video. Let me say this: th throughout the game, Scott Drew went to his matchup zone. Just after timeout, sometimes on a side out of bounds, the compliment is man to man. And then if you watch this closely, Arch, at some point in the possession, his matchup zone almost becomes man to man. But it just gave Villanova a different look. I thought it confused them to a certain degree and it made him even harder to play against. This is their zone, right? So you start looking right now, right? Villanova is just kind of, is this man is his zone? Is this man is his zone? What does it look like now? You know, is it man is its zone? Now, all of a sudden, it's like, uh-oh, now they're man. And you look back to your point. You see cutters off the ball. You yeah, see how they're And, and to me, this, this is probably the, the, the best example or one of a few that I think you're going to be able to see that when Samuels picks this ball up, a Kinjo and Flagler ball sides, they're literally choking them off. There yeah, is no sure. kick out. And Arch, Second, let me say this. That, that looks good. But the guy who's defending the ball, he's right. one on one with no help if you do that a lot of times. So, and you know, they don't have the weak it. defender. They don't have the weak defender, whether it's their five or whether that it's their point guard. 
they're all guarding the ball individually, and that results in a turnover. So now they're man to man, and they're icing the middle ball screen. Right, that's that's how they do it. But just it, it's beyond just that. As the possession goes, again to your point, individual defense on the ball, but watch the guys off the ball not losing sight of the guy they're guarding. So there's the jump stop that you talked about, Arch. And right now, as Villanova cuts, you see how Baylor just hugs the shooters doesn't lose sight and then their length around the basket is you know something that's not easy to score over and they rebound third clip coming right here again man to man got great help by number 24 mayor great help it's not as if they don't help there they combine it right but there's that one-on-one -on -one defense i just can't get over this point right here that when you watch a true freshman guarding arguably one of Villanova's oldest, most experienced guards and in, in more. Watch the on-ball defense without fouling yeah. and then Showing the off-ball yeah. staying at home. And obviously when you play Villanova, and we talked about this earlier, they are so dependent on the three-point shot, right? But again, there's that second part of Baylor. Why did he pass up the layup? Because of the athleticism and length around the basket. Not yeah. only do they have great team quickness on the perimeter, but they also have guys that make hard plays on the ball, block shots, and challenge you at the rim. But you see the score. Villanova has nine points under the four-minute media timeout. There's this length that I'm talking about. And again, rebounding. Um, some so I'll make this, make this point right here. You know, Villanova does a, a lot of exchanging um, while things are happening. There's exchanges on the weak on side. The as, side yep. Yeah. So the left so side of this floor yeah. is this ball screen's happening. You have an exchange happening, which occupies the defense. I thought Baylor consistently all game long just traded those two guys off and kept their defense completely zeroed in on the ball without any worrying about, you know, moving while the ball is moving. But you have three on the ball right away because Mayer basically just traded off. He never had to leave his gap. And they, they completely corral it right here. It takes a lot of discipline and communication. They switch off the ball every game, too, so it wasn't something that was new. But there's that one-on-one -on -one with no help. And, again, go back, Arch, if you could. That, that's their center. That's Baylor's center. And a lot of times Villanova, they try to exploit the other team's center by driving. You can't do that to Baylor because they're solid at all five positions. But yet look at the length as the ball gets close to the basket. They're not small. So – they can guard the ball with quickness, but their length is in place as well. Again, so this is I, Spain oh. action. This is Spain action, and this is a this is a typical ball screen that a lot of people are running. Middle ball screen high on the floor with a back screener in the middle of the floor who's a shooter. He could slip out. He could set the screen on the plug defender. It causes a lot of problems in the middle of the floor. I thought Baylor did a great job of the of the switch. As you can see, they got two on the ball. And uh, they're holding from the lowest opposite man on the return. Yep. These guys do a great job returning. You need to help and recover right there. If you ever want to, you ever, if you go back, if you ever want to talk about what does help and recover mean? I mean, if, if you look right now, Baylor's defender guarding the right corner, number 23 on Villanova, just watch how he helps his teammate. You know, so you got the two guys on the ball, but watch off the ball. He takes away the layup. Help, recover, recover, and now they're playing one-on-one -on -one with no help. And, again, I coach James. You're not backing him down anytime soon. <laughs> he may not be 6'4", but he is a bulldog. And, again, it's the ending with the size and the length. Here's, we'll another, zone. Here's zone. another zone clip for you. You'd say, why are they playing zone? Well, look at the clock. It's the first media timeout of the second half. Scott Drew kind of changing the look. And it's not easy to tell, is he man or is he zone? So they're in a matchup zone. It's a different look. Villanova, in some ways, to me, almost is confused. They're not comfortable, certainly, you know, and they take that 15-foot two-point shot because of it. So here, here, here's another, you know, point, the awareness that they made. I want you to watch Flagler. I believe this is Flagler number four here when the ball hits the logo area, watch his awareness 
I mean, they are so locked in when that ball hits that paint on staying at home. Tough to rebound, but here's another great example here in this next clip of movement off the ball in Baylor exchanging with Flagler and Mayer over here so they stay in their gaps. Yeah. yeah. So you got the switch. You got the different look once in a while off a timeout. You got the ice coverage on the ball with great help. And then you have individual defense and all four others staying at home. And then you have the great size and length at the end. This, this kind of compares. And again, they gave him a different look. They, that, that time they trapped the, the pick and roll. Nothing easy, one pass away. There's the middle ball. You got Sam Jermaine Samuels, who's an absolute nightmare matchup. They're playing him at the center position right now. Think about what Villanova's doing in this game. They've moved their center to Jermaine Samuels, who may start at the three and Thamba is guarding him. So watch the the one-on-one -on -one ability of Baylor's individual defenders. This is Jermaine Samuels on a center. Yeah. I mean, do you know Look how hard it is for a center to guard Jermaine Samuels like this? And again, remember, they're not compromising the no three and stay at home on your man, which we've already I give a Ken, I give a Ken Joe a lot of the credit on this clip right here, his awareness. I mean, he's outside the charge circle. He's ready to draw a charge if need be. Kendall Brown on the weak side is getting ready to drop and recover. Again, help and his. recover, Arch. Help, help and recover. So you got him helps. playing at home. Yep. Yep. Flagler, again, who to me did an unbelievable job. Watch him ball side corner. Don't run in. Don't turn your back to the ball. No three ball side. Yeah, and that's one of the things that hurt Gillespie. He wasn't able to get clean looks off the ball. So this is my favorite, this is my favorite clip. So it's 47-29. We've all been there. Sometimes this dominant performance, you get towards the end of the game and it gets sloppy. So Baylor turns it over. Watch their A, awareness and transition defense. And watch, they fix basically, in essence, a two-on-one, and they make it a five-on-five. -five. So watch, here it is. Numbers, they're scrambling. They're working to fix it, help and recover. They're giving great effort. They're giving great effort, help and recover again. There, there's the stay at home arch on the jump stop. If you go back as he jump stops to, to kick for a three or kick for a backdoor cut, Baylor stays at home again. Remember this possession started with a turnover. Look how it ends. Help and recover again. It's a great possession. I mean, look, look at this. And then they finish with the rebound and at length at the rim is the difference so many times, you know, but that that's it. Uh, I mean, let me say this. I'll end with this. I don't believe Scott Drew gets nearly enough credit for the great coach that he is and has become. Uh, he's done the thing that's the hardest for all of us. And that is to stay at one place, especially at the power five level for almost 20 years to inherit the program that he inherited and to do what he's done. I mean, not only did they win the national championship last year, but the year before, they were one of the favorites to do it before COVID hit. And now on the heels of those two seasons, this is now three in a row where today they're the number one team in the country and have a real chance to compete for this year's national championship. You shouldn't be talking about a coach who has that type of resume, recent resume, and ever say he doesn't get nearly the credit that he deserves. 